All right, guys, so this is going to dictate what the rest of the mood of the video is going to be like. And so with that being said, I am internally praying. I hope you are praying for me as well. And so let's freaking go. Moment of truth, guys. Moment of truth. I've heard of this new drug on the market. It's called copium. Let's go skip. Hopefully it's a new one. Hopefully um, it's not even a new one. You know what people do in these circumstances, guys? We go again. One more. Just one more. Just one more for hero, okay? Just one more. Okay, one more. Just one more. Come on, guys. Holy crap, I spent 50k loo members. Okay, let's freaking go. Let's do this. Mm, oh my god, that's even worse. Holy crap, what the frick? You know what people do in scenarios like this? We, we go again. We freaking go again, guys, okay? Most of you have probably heard the famous quote from Miley Cyrus, can't stop, won't stop. So let's freaking go one more. Okay, it's just, just one more. Just one more, guys. One more. All right, confirm and please be something good. Just just one. Come on. 30. All right. All right, we stop there. All right, we stop there. We stop there, guys. No, we freaking don't. We don't stop there. Holy moly. Another dupe? This is really spicy. Okay, we can't stop here now. We're, we're, we're in too deep now. We're in too deep. Last one, last one, last one. 40. This is 40 pulls. 40 pulls, okay? 40 pulls. Come on. Are you serious? Are you serious? Oh my god. Oh. I am so tilted. I am tilted off the face of this earth. And we got an Isvan dupe. I don't even use Isvan anymore. Okay, okay. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more. 50, 50, 50. I'm, I'm sure this will be it. I'm sure we'll find something here. Come on, 50. Okay, ready? Last one, guys. All right. Doesn't even matter what this is. Doesn't even matter what this is, my dudes. Oh, wow. Wow. And that, my friends, is why I am broke as hell. Actually, you know what? How many pulls can I squeeze out of that? One, four, nine, five, four, uh, yeah, okay, let's do it. All right, guys, I am back. And as you can see, we do have a temple over here. So I believe I am on the 51st pull. And so our pity should be rising from here. So hopefully I don't go too far into like the 60s or 70s or whatever. This is going to be my 51st to my 60th pull. But like, I think I need to stop here, guys. All right, I swear to God, guys, this is going to be the last one. So, oh my God, no more. Holy crap. No more. Absolutely no no more. All right, come on. All right. Yeah. Nah, I can't. I can't do this anymore. I actually cannot do this anymore. Holy crap. I didn't even get Taki, I don't think. Like, wait, is that Taki? I don't even want the guy. I don't need I don't Yeah. Okay. All right, we take that. No, we don't. I I am utterly disappointed. Okay, guys, this is seriously it. I cannot, like, put together anymore, okay? This is actually it. We're gonna do three more singles and then call it a day. So let me hit it one time, and hopefully in these three pulls, I will get something. Come on. Next. Thank you. Next. Oh, my God. That's that's actually... Oh. Oh, my God. All right, one more. Next. Come on. Just give it to me. Just give it to me, daddy. Oh my god. How is my luck so freaking bad? This is like the sixth time I've had to go to pity. All right, last one. Last one, guys. This has got to be it. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and I honestly want to end it all. I kind of just want to go outside and in this video, we are going to be talking about Taki and Hero because there is actually quite a fair bit to talk about. A lot of the things that I actually talked about in like my predictions videos or like my first impressions, a lot of it actually was wrong. And so I have actually covered them in like a first impressions video for like one for each, I think. However, there is a little bit more going on than like the meets the eye. And what I mean by that is like some mechanics don't don't work the way that I thought they would. And then we've also on top of that got a hero bug. It may be a bug, it may not be, but we'll see. And so that being said, let's start talking about the bug first actually. All right guys, so it is important to talk about this because even if it's not a bug, it actually does change like hero's effectiveness. For you guys who don't know how hero works, essentially every time she walks through an enhanced tile, she gains like a stance thing. And every time she goes into stance, she actually gains stacks. So let me just like quickly run through that down here. As you can see, hero enters dual stance at the start of the round or when passing through
through an enhanced tile. And so every time you actually enter this stance, you gain 4% attack up to a maximum of 20%. On top of that, as she is passing through everyone, she is actually going to chunk them really, really hard in a cross shape around her. And so what this guy on Reddit is saying, Alex Shishali99, he's saying that when Hero is not the captain, the stance is not triggered more than once. And so he has this example video over here. And so let's have a look through it. Okay, guys. So as you can see, we have Midgard as captain and then we've got Hero as well, not the captain. And so you can see that he is drawing the path and he is about to actually pass through two enhanced tiles. So what you need to notice is that when you attack from this side, you'll see the number damage go like that way. Actually, I think my webcam is reversed. So it's like really that way. But why that's important is because you need to see Hero's damage to actually ascertain whether she is actually getting the enhanced damage or not. And so if I play through this, you're gonna see Hero eventually. She's gonna do like, I think 3.8K or something. So we've got Hero coming up here and she's gonna whack him. And so that 2.6K and then 3.7K, 3.8K, 4.2K, okay. And so let's talk through that damage a little bit because it actually sounds like a little bit too little. I would kind of expect for when she actually attacks from this tile, it would go actually up to like 5k. Because as you saw from like when she walked over this tile, she got a massive spike in damage. However, when she walked onto this tile, like it was only a really mediocre amount of damage. And on top of that, what the guy is saying, so let me scroll in a little bit. If you guys can see the star that's next to the hero's portrait, essentially that is when hero has her dual stance active. And so what I think should be happening is when she walks over and attacks the guy, she will lose the dual stance. However, after that, when she walks over an enhanced tile, she should get the star back. And so let's watch through this a second time and you'll see that star actually flicker on and off. So it is actually on right now. And so let's see what happens when she attacks. Uh, we've got Hero coming up. Hero is next. So watch the star. She attacks and then you see the star goes black, right? And then so she walked over an enhanced tile. It doesn't go white again. And I think it's supposed to, to be honest. And so whether this is a bug or not, like that actually really changes things because it means that you're losing a lot of hero's effectiveness if you're not running her as leader to be able to take advantage of those enhanced tiles. I personally think it's a bug because I don't think that hero should be a leader to actually proc all of those enhanced tiles or her dual stance. If it's not a bug, then I think it's bad design because like you really shouldn't be locking heroes to leaders. The point of having a captain or a leader is so that you can have the different kind of like flexibility in the units you put out onto the field. Having that effect happen to Hero, I really think it defeats the purpose of like that philosophy. And so yeah, guys, if you are bothered by this, or if you do think that it shouldn't be like this, then like go over to the Discord and leave some feedback. I'm sure there are already a bunch of people who have left the Hero feedback, but a little bit more feedback can't hurt, right guys? And so with that being said, let's start talking about Hero and Taki themselves in more of like a character evaluation kind of way. Because that itself was a pretty nice showcase but like let's have a look at her numbers again all right so again we have hero we've got oh my god every time i see this this is actually freaking incredible i really think that like even with the alleged bug like having that conversion on any two chosen tiles to enhance green tiles on a three turn cd and on top of that also doing like explosive damage in a cross shape like even if they took this out i'd be like wow this is a great, great skill. From all of the different gameplay I've seen of Hero, I do think that she is quite a strong detonator. And by now, I should not have to explain this equipment to you because we literally just like showcased it. So again, my impression of the active skill is that this is freaking godly and I would take like any unit that has this. And on the other hand, I do think that this is pretty strong. I'm just a big fan of stacking mechanisms. And last but not least is the chain combo in which we have the one cluster into diamond into two clusters. This is identical to like a lot of my favorite detonators such as like Charon and so like this one gets a massive tick from me. Again, just to reiterate, I'm a massive fan of clusters because they just cover like a whole bunch of scenarios. It's way easier to hit a point blank AOE around your character than it is to do like some weird cross shape or something like that. On top of that, I do think that clusters favor boss killing. And typically speaking, the hardest content is gonna feature bosses. So yeah, we take that. But all in all, I do think that she is a really strong unit and she is like really needed to be honest in like the six star forest units. As for her breakthroughs, I think that the breakthrough three is really freaking good. Just having that conversion on a preemptive, like it's just so freaking spicy. Burst right out of the gate. On the other hand, this one is kind of murk because like, like I said, even if she took away like this guy over here, I would still take that. But yeah, all in all, I think Hero is very, very solid and she is worth rolling for. I freaking went in 63 for her and I still didn't get her after all. Though to be honest, I didn't even get anything at all. So yeah. All right, moving on. Let's start talking about Taki. So Taki is a really interesting one because like some of the things that I thought would work with him, like it 
actually doesn't work. And what I'm really alluding to is this guy over here applying burn marks to targets before dealing damage. So I don't know if you guys have noticed by now, but burn mark is different from a burn stack. Why couldn't they just call it something else? Like seriously, there's more words than burn, like scorch, ember mark, scorch mark, flame mark, fire mark, literally any mark, but they had to use burn again. And so what I'm really trying to say here is that because this burn mark is different to burn stacks, he does not actually have the synergies with like your Uriel or your Leona. Instead, in a nutshell, he is a greedy DPS. And so let's have a look. Launches searing flames towards the selected tile that erupts in a cross shape area. Oh my God, sometimes I hate reading. And deals 400% damage, deals 80% to enemies on both sides of the selected tile. And so I guess the most important thing that you should take away from this is that the center tile takes 400% damage and the side tiles take 80% damage. So it still is, I guess, kind of boss killing. Like all in all, that's actually quite a fair bit of damage, right? So you got 80 times four, so that's going to be about like 320 plus 400, 720% damage if you hit like a two by two boss. Actually, that's not correct. It needs to be a three by three to be able to take the entire cross shape. That sounds like a pretty good ratio. However, let's start talking about the burn mark. And so the burn mark essentially is like, well, I'm going to mark an enemy and then I'm going to deal extra damage to them. And so it synergizes with the equipment. As you can see at the start of the round, applies a burn mark to the enemy with the highest percentage of HP. And this is the most important part. Increases all damage Taki deals to the target by 10%. On top of that, every time you kill somebody with the burn mark, you get an increase of 3% attack up to a maximum of 15%. And so what this is telling me is like the most efficient way of using this is probably like killing off the smaller mobs because that's probably the only way that you're actually going to be able to stack this guy over here. My first instinct was that this is not going to be that great for boss fights. However, I realized that like with this guy over here, which is really big, the boss is going to be permanently marked with the burn mark. So Taki is going to constantly be doing an extra 10% damage to it. Yes, he cannot stack it, but like having a perma 10% damage on a boss is actually pretty freaking good. All in all, I think it's a very well balanced kit because like there are a lot of scenarios where like if the equipment just had this effect, it would kind of be really crappy. However, they kind of did think about like both scenarios with like a boss versus a lot of mobs. And so he actually has the ability to cater to both of those scenarios. And so to the design team, I say, well, well done. It doesn't look overpowered. It actually looks kind of good. On the other hand, we have the chain combo over here. It deals 145% damage to three rows. So again, like I said in my last video, I have used Uriel. I have have used like Raphael and I have used Nikinas before. I personally think that the road and the column archetype for the chain combos is just not actually that strong. Just from personal experience, purely anecdotal, like when you have like those massive, massive squares, again, I'm showing my bias for clusters. But generally speaking, if you have those clusters, they are going to hit more cells than like these row or column ones. The only scenario where I can actually think of like a row or a column actually outperforming like one of those big square ones is if A, the unit is really far away. And so like you send it like flying down the columns or B if you actually have mobs that take up like entire columns or rows so the only mob that I'm thinking of is Nozard and so like if Nozard is positioned there and then you do like a column damage and then it hits like the first cell of all of those freaking cells that Nozard is occupying then potentially it hits like 10 cells or something but then you got Nozard like flipping over to the other side and then suddenly you can only hit like six cells in that scenario again I would probably take clusters because like you're going to be hitting six cells no matter which direction you're going in but again I do use my Uriel I have gotten used to it it's just like feeling a bit weak sometimes definitely not my favorite chain combo pattern but definitely not the one i like the least i really do not like those cross ones like oh my lord all right and as for breakthrough the active skill enhancement the selected tiles are converted to red enhanced tiles this is pretty lit i do like that especially because i thought it was originally going to be built into the skill however it's kind of good because if it was built into the skill it'd probably be on like a four turn cooldown and my philosophy on active skills are like the lower the cd on a skill the better it is and so if it's actually a three turn CD with like these effects, but like we've got this effect locked behind the second breakthrough, then what this means is that one day you will be able to get this red enhanced tiles effect onto the base skill. And on top of that, have it on a three turn skill CD, which is pretty freaking lit. Otherwise you do have the BT5 saying that it's just gonna go from like active to preemptive. Both of the breakthroughs are like kind of okay. I don't think they're like really, really game breaking. They are like honestly really nice to have, and that's kind of it. I think what's stuck in my mind is like the use case for this one over here, the red enhanced tiles, because if you're nuking a freaking target with it, like chances are you're not going to be able to kill it. And so if you nuke a boss and then you've converted that tile underneath the boss with a red enhanced tile, you can't even get to it, bro. Like he's freaking standing on it. What the hell are you going to do about it? And so in some use cases, I can see why this is like kind of deemed a little bit useless. However, if you do use the active to actually kill something off, well, actually that could be pretty worth it. But yeah, just some of the different scenarios that you're going to actually encounter if you play with Taki. I think Taki is decent. Like he's got 
got decent stats. He looks like pretty cool. He was pretty cool in the story. And all in all, he seems like a solid unit. He just doesn't seem like a really, really busted unit. For me personally, when I look at Hero's Kit, I'm like, well, this has the potential to be really freaking busted. But then I go over to Taki and I'm like, mm, maybe not so much. And maybe that's because Hero is a six star and that is probably what they should be doing. But otherwise, I think that ends my evaluation for Hero and Taki, both of them. And so should you roll this banner? Well, maybe if you really like Hero. Somehow I got caught up in the story and I was like, wow, I like Hero now. But I do know that Beth is probably coming very, very soon. So like you guys should probably keep that in mind if you are holding out for her. As for me, I still don't know like when I'll get over my crippling depression from like the start of the video. And on top of that, I don't know if I want to break the pity for like an attempt at Hero or like if I want to save it for Beth. I still hate the fact that this game makes you go through the 50-50 without like a guaranteed chance on the banner unit. That is probably like my biggest complaint about the game, but like whatever. All right, whatever. That's, that's enough of my musings, okay? And so with that being said, let's start wrapping up the video because I don't think there's too much left to talk about, guys. And so with that being said, I do have a secret question for you guys. Did you guys roll for Hero or did you roll for Taki? Did you have good luck? Did you have bad luck? Did you enjoy watching me slip into crippling depression? Let me know down in the comments below because if you do, it lets me know that you've actually watched up until the end of the video. And so for that, thank you so much. But otherwise, you guys already know the drill. You got to like, subscribe, follow, and the notification bell. Apparently, that really makes a difference, guys. So hit the notification notification bell for me if you guys do want to see the videos as they pop up. On top of that, if you would like to support the channel, we've got a membership thing down in the description below as well as some affiliate links. But otherwise, as Hero once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.